What's going on, beautiful people? It's your boy, C-Dub, a.k.a. Critwit, coming at you guys with another commentary video from California Bicycle Racing. This time, it's the 3-4 race. Hope you guys are ready for this. So right now, you see, we're at the start, and we're just getting going. Again, thank you all for clicking the vid, for checking this thing out. And this time, I'm going to try to do something a little bit different. I'm, I have the race results before me, but it's also like... 16 pages so i'm going to try to hopefully quickly identify who these riders are so that i can call these gentlemen by name versus just by kit we're going to try that and we're going to see how it's going to work out but right now we've just come through turn number one and i'm currently sitting on uh dave's wheel who rides with padjock racing team and of course i know that because i used to be with that team but uh, we're going to try this thing, getting the uh, the names of these racers and see how this thing pans out. If it gets too hectic today, uh, I'm going to try something different next time. Maybe get the actual uh, numerical roster of everybody so that it makes it a little bit easier for me to quickly identify the racers if I can get that information. But again, thank you for clicking this vid. We're coming up right now on turn number three. Um, getting ready to go into the 3% little roller right here as you see me sitting on two SCC Velo riders wheels or in between them two. Um, again, thank you guys for uh, clicking the vid. I can't say that enough. I really appreciate your time. This video should roughly be just over 40 minutes. And so uh, this is again the category 3-4 in California Bicycle Racing Carson. Um, if you guys haven't subscribe to the, the Critwit Roadrunner family, I ask that you would take the time to hit that subscribe button down below and I welcome you with open arms and open heart to the Critwit Roadrunner family. So right now we are about to go through the start finish and you see the pace is good. We're going 27 miles an hour, 175 beats per minute and doing just over 300 watts. It fluctuates of course, but I'm um, currently doing three watts so it's pretty low. And so I'm sitting right now on James's wheel from uh, Velo Pasadena with the, again, the yellow force socks on who I was actually drafting in the category four race. And hopefully you all have seen that video already. I try to give a little bit of time between the two videos just to, you know, give them their space um, to be able to give you all a time to preview them and uh, get ready for the next video. So right now, again, uh, going about 28, 29 miles an hour, and this section should get pretty fast here. I believe I'm also sitting on Steve's wheel with uh, Lagrange. Um, I like their kits, their kits are really nice. Um, 86, I believe it's 861, I believe that's Steve right there. He's got the nice arrow socks on, but um, we're going 30 miles an hour down that little uh, low section there. And, uh, you know, Again, Steve is a, is a larger guy. I think he's probably about 170. And so, uh, again, when I mention larger guys in these commentary videos, I'm pretty much talking about people that are 180, 185, and down to maybe 170. Um, and me being over 200 pounds, I call myself a Clydesdale at times. But you know what? I'm a bigger guy. So you see right here, my heart rate is at 180, 179, going 25, 24 miles an hour, and uh, pushing out just over 400 watts. And uh, everything is good. I got 94 revolutions per minute going. So the average you want to keep anywhere between 80 to 100 revolutions per minute. And that's good to keep the blood flowing in your legs. And the, the, it it uh, inhibits anything from uh, locking up, but it keeps everything nice and flowing. So uh, that's what my goal is, to try to keep everything moving and keep everything spinning. But as I've also identified that, you know, every once in a while, you know, stopping the legs does help a little bit as well. And as I mentioned to you guys just a little bit earlier, I'm going to try to call some of these riders out by number, by name, via their number on their jerseys. But if I can't see the number, then of course I'm going to have to call them out by their uh, their their kit color. Um, so right now, just sitting on this guy's wheel, um, he's rocking the uh, Halloween. I'm going to call them the Halloween four socks, I believe, the orange and black with the black kit. So just sitting here, and my goals for this race really was to finish. Um, usually with my second race is because I know that I'm a little taxed from the first race, that my biggest goal is just to finish strong in the second race, or just finish, finish. Um, my second preem for this one was to go for a cash preem. So as you already know, in the Cat 4 race, I was able to get a preem, um, a $50 preem, and uh, so I was excited. I was like, well, let's see if I can do that again here in the 3-4 race. And so in this 3-4 race, there actually was uh, more 
riders in this race than what was in the actual category four race. And in this race, there was 88 riders. So this Peloton was humongous. I mean, I can't explain to you how big it was. So if you look in my rear view camera at the bottom left, I got riders behind me. There's a group of guys behind me. And then of course there's a group of guys in front of me and you know, just sitting in decent positions here. You know what? I'm just going to confess now. I'm not going to look at the paper because it's going to be too hard for me to try to shift through or sift through uh, 16 pages to try to find um, these guys at a moment's notice. So I'll do better on that the next time. I promise I will try to get something a little bit more organized uh, for the commentary video just to be able to call each one of these men out by name. Um, but I, I don't think they mind me calling them out by bib or, or by a uh, kit. And if you do have any comments, please leave the information down below. If you also have any information of where I can get a um, organized bid number layout, you know, like if the see all our numbers are 800 series. So if I can get 800, 801, so forth and so on, that will help me out a lot. So I can just look like the guy to my left here, his number is 882. I can just look at the bottom of the list, find 882 and then call him out by name. So if you guys have any information on how I can get that, uh, that information, I ask that you would uh, put that down in the comment section below. Um, and once again, I just say thank you because, you know, this is a grind getting these videos up and getting them out to you guys and gals. And I really enjoy uh, going back, looking at these commentary videos. I love uh, responding to your comments and your questions. Um, and again, I'm, this, this is all about enjoying the journey. And I truly am having a grand time doing these videos as you know have over 220 videos up i think over 230 videos now and uh we're making our way to a thousand uh just trying to hit, hit some mile markers and just keep the grind going um so right now just sitting behind a dna guy um and i can tell by the kit because i got the d on the on the back side and then i have uh one of the big orange guys there so this guy he's actually the um 845 he is uh, I believe a member of EXBC, I was just told uh, in the comment section on the Cat 4 video, but he is the race leader in the Category 4 race. So we got some Cat 3s and Cat 4s in this race. I just passed Ron Tello um, of Pat Doc Racing Team. Uh, he was wearing the black kit. I think he's just to my right right now. You can't see him. So we got Lagrange there, and I'm not sure whose wheel I'm on right now. This Bicycle Plus, I believe that's what that says. Uh, so we're going to just keep it like it was by calling them out by by uh by kits because that's just what's easy for your boy c dub right now so you see me taking a little bit inside inside line um and i noticed a lot of guys are staying away from the inside a little bit um and so i felt just better to maintain my momentum and go through the inside uh, of these turns especially coming into this three percent roller so as you see right now they had a lot of sc velo guys here so sc velo is just to the left there um, and then we got DNA in front of me and then Big Orange in front of the DNA guy there. So, again, there's not much going on here right now. It's a three, it's a, cat, a category three, four race. So um, I would say a lot more, uh, uh, I guess you could say, I want to say mature. But just, you know, the, the as you cat up, the races are not as punchy, meaning that you don't have guys going here and guys going there. You know, you see here in this race, it's pretty much. You know, you got three different lines right here. It's all kind of, you know, it's pace lined out. Everybody's tucked in. Everybody's following. And you can even see that the, the speed is up. We're at 27 miles an hour. My heart rate's up a little bit at 183, 182. Uh, my revolutions per minute is at, my cadence is at 96. Um, I'm pushing out just over now as my cadence, my power drops. But I was pushing out just over 300 watts there. So now I'm coasting into this turn. And of course, because this course is all uh, right hand turns or you can say clockwise the best line to have would be inside you know because of the fact that you're making all these right hand turns it doesn't make any sense to go to the outside if you can stay on the inside now there's going to be situations there's going to be times when you have to avoid something or you know the guy on the inside is moving too slow and you need to go around him you got to take the line you have to take so you know it is what it is but we all get it done and i'm just very happy to be able to sit here and and do this commentary today to say that there was i was not in a crash and so i'm very fortunate and very thankful for that so you see there we're passing some guys going up this climb he probably was up front pulling i believe we just passed toyota from big orange and if you look in the rearview camera you got uh, ron sitting on my wheel right there and then we got steve to my left right here in the garage and so we're just riding, going 26 miles an hour. Heart rate's at 184. 
and uh, all is well so far. And one thing I, I have noticed about the Category 3 and Category 4 races, that when they put us two together, is that the tempo stays consistent, meaning there's not a whole bunch of lulling, meaning that it surges and the whole peloton is going really, really fast. And then, you know, nobody wants to get up in front and pull. So then it slows down a lot or we bunch up across the road. But yet it kind of it really does say stay consistent. And so you see here, once we go into turn number three, you, if you look up there, you'll see that, the, you know, it's pretty much pace lined all out. And, you know, it's very hard for people to move up um, at, you know, at times. And so you see if you see there, you see I'm pretty I'm pretty good ways back. But if you look behind me, there is a good little amount of people behind. me. There's probably about 20 guys behind me, if, if not more than that. So I'm a little bit far back in the uh, in the Peloton and I'm just trying to stay covered from the wind because I am a larger rider, meaning over 200 pounds. And so I just try to stay protected from from the elements, try to try to stay protected from the wind. And so, of course, in this race, I start to notice, you know, some different people that I raced against, you know, just over just a little bit over an hour ago in the category four race. So I say, OK, these are some strong riders like the guy up here at about one o'clock with the uh, yellow and black kit on. Uh, I believe that's a pink, um, a lace sprint. Not sure what he what he's riding, but um, I know you know started noticing some people, and so I was like, okay, all right, I know some wheels that I could follow if need be. But for the time being, I'm gonna just stay where I'm at, try to stay protected, stay out of the wind. We're going 24 miles an hour, so we've slowed down just a little bit, and you see my heart rate still at 177. So all is well. But again, if you've made it this far in the video, I do ask, and you see now I'm moving up. So go on the outside, or actually go on the inside to move up a couple spots. So there's Isaac just now passing Isaac right there. You see him in the rear camera, on the right side of the rear camera, coming up to the front because we slow down a little bit, 24 miles an hour. And so you see we have about a three or four man break up the road. And so I move up to the front of the Peloton just to be closer to the, you know, to the action you know, per se. So right now we're up here. We got serious cycling right there. Number eight, three, zero, that's serious cycling. And then we have Ronnie chalk right there, um, in the SC Velo kit with the uh, white and red force socks on. I also want to thank all my sponsors. I want to thank, uh, force try socks. I want to thank union sport. I want to thank Spinergy. I want to thank California bicycle racing. I want to thank myogenics. I want to thank all of you. I want to thank JL Velo. I want to thank all my sponsors just for their support, uh, continual support on Instagram, continual support on Facebook, and just even, you know, when we communicate, just being so very supportive of everything that I'm doing because they understand what I'm trying to do by just bringing attention and bringing awareness to the world about cycling. Um, be more specific, bicycle racing, whether it's criterium, roll racing, stage racing, whatever it may be. So right now you see I'm sitting on Dorian's wheel. Um, he's right here in front of me. Um, that's Dorian. And uh, we're moving. So looking at the rear camera, you see there's a lot of bo bodies behind me. Look at that peloton behind me. There's a lot of people, 88 people in this race, and the cap was 100. So there is a lot of people in this race. You see the spectators there on turn number four getting that good footage of us coming around that turn. And uh, so, again, I, you see where I'm sitting. I'm trying to stay inside the best that I can. And, you know, I got to bump in just a little bit, you know, to go around people. And I realized that Dorian was a good wheel to sit on from racing with him at other CBR, maybe like CBR cars, or excuse me, CBR Dominguez Hills, or even at Victorville. Um, found out that Dorian had like did a fixie race the day before, jumped in his car the next morning and came and did Victorville and did absolutely fantastic in that race so um i know that dorian is a very strong rider so right now just up near the front again you see ronnie right there of sc velo and uh sitting right now on a south bay wheelman wheel uh this kit right here in front of me they're called the south bay wheelman and so you see here how it slows down a little bit how the, the group is now kind of bunching out and that happens in most races when people up front are kind of looking and you see the yellow jersey wearer right here i'm just passing him on the left so i'm moving up because i know that ronnie chalk is a strong rider as well i watched him at roger milliken trying to do a solo uh bridge effort there was a breakaway up the road at roger milliken and i i noticed ronnie because he was out there by himself trying to bridge across the gap there's larry tonza right there about my uh 11 o'clock um with the black paddock racing team kit on and I'm sitting on, not sure who's will I'm sitting on, but this is SDBC right here. 
Um, there was a lot of Cat 3 people in this race, but as soon as you can see right now, this thing is pace lined out. We're going 23 miles an hour, and uh, we're, it's moving. So I, he, he got me just a little bit, but I knew I was going to be able to slide over and jump on the wheel. So we got, um, we're just at about 15 minutes in this video. So we're almost halfway there. So right now we're coming through the start finish and uh, the tempo is at 25. So it's kind of consistent right now. You see people, everybody getting water. Um, again, this I believe this race is 45 minutes long versus the category four race was four min 40 minutes long. And uh, we're just making our way around the course. So of course you see it's four right hand turns, nothing crazy. The major um, course landmark is really that, that the kicker right before turn number four. And it's again a three percent roller but again if you're just not clicking into the vid or you fast forward and you're looking for yourself or looking for something and you haven't subscribed to the crit wit roll runner family i ask that you will go ahead and hit that subscribe button and if you're also watching this video and you have not yet set up a a, a, a youtube account i ask that you will go ahead and pause the video right now and set you up that free YouTube account and come on back and join the family by hitting that subscribe button and notifications. So you see right here to my uh, my two o'clock, that is Prince Patel of Serious Cycling. Again, another strong rider. I took notice of him because he was one person I would see come out, I believe with his brother, as well as with his, his mother and father. I believe he has a sister as well, but he was somebody that I identified because he brought his whole family out there. And it was pretty cool seeing, you know, this guy have, you know, a couple of racers in the same family and them bringing their families out. So that was amazing. So you see here me holding the inside, passing a few different DNA guys. You got the yellow jersey where he's on my wheel, also with, with serious cycling. Um, you see him right there in my rear camera on the right hand side. So that's the, um, the leader's jersey wear. And so just trying to stay up close to the front, just try to stay, you know, out of the wind. And of course, I got to jump in the wind every once in a while if I'm going to go around a couple of people just to maintain position. So you see, <laughs> you see Isaac there. He is a vocal rider. Like if you get into a race with Isaac or Jesus Hernandez, he is very vocal. So just stay focused and just, you know, sometimes he may be saying something right. Sometimes he may be, may not. But just, you know, just stay focused and, you know, keep keep riding. And that's a good thing. So this green kit was something different to see. It says origin on the side. It was a it was kind of a breath of fresh air to see a different color kit because most kits are like blue, black, red, you know, white. So seeing a green kit out there was really nice and refreshing. Um, something different. 818. So I give you some kudos, some crit wit love, I guess you say. But right now I'm sitting on Gamma Laura's wheel. Um, and again, he's he rides with Dorian. And these two guys are phenomenal when they get set up for their lead outs and everything like that just some good riders and they're both young i actually was looking at the result after the race was over and these guys are 18 and 19 years old so keep it in mind you know keep in mind i'm over 35 years old racing against guys that are 20 years younger than me so and they're crushing the game so i'm a little jealous that they were able to get it in earlier in life than i was but you know what we all out here getting it in together so you see me tip uh tuck in on the inside because there's a lot of guys on the outside there so i just kind of tucked in and went in inboard in the peloton um just to be able to make a move and get back outside so if you if you've noticed a lot of my position i stay on the inside and it's just because from watching a lot of films so not only do i watch my own videos i watch you know other racers videos like no name cat one or 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 to run or um, um, Leo Buckdai, or I watch even Sharon Smith or uh, Rasan Bahadi or even um, Nation's Number One Beast. I watch these guys' as videos um, just to learn. I even watch the vegan cyclist videos just to see, you know, where their lines are. I watch people like Sean ba uh, ba Bagley or Bogley uh, with JL Velo. I watch these guys' videos just to see what lines to take and where, where I need to be. Um, at what times I need to be there, what should I be looking for. I watch video to see what the terrain is like, what the roads are like. And so I try to gather as much information I can, um, even if I've written the course before, just because it may be something that I overlooked when I actually rolled the course or raced on it. So you see me now, I kind of come underneath a little bit. I wanted to move up some spots. So you see there, I moved up a little bit. I probably hit just over 400 watts, maybe even 500 watts for that move. Um, but I needed to move up. And um, that's one thing I'm learning, too. You can't get complacent in these races um, because you, it's easy just to find a wheel, sit on it and sit on it and sit on it. You end up finding yourself missing moves. 
and missing things and you find yourself out of place. And so right now you see I'm moving up still. I'm holding it inside and I know that the Peloton is going to come back to me because, you know, but I wasn't too far out of the stream. So I was just out inside just a little bit. But you have here again, Isaac, and then you got Dorian right there. So I'm around a good group of guys. And I'm not sure, again, if you saw the Cat 4 race, but yet Isaac was like, hey, jump on. He patted his hip. He was like, hey, jump on. So he's a good, strong rider as well. He does phenomenal in on the fixie scene. And I uh, found out who his coach was, and I'm going to say it by name. Maybe not. I'll keep that, this, that information disclosed. But he told me who his coach was, and I was pretty impressed. And his coach, I'll say like this, his coach knows Justin Williams pretty good. So that that when he told me who his coach was, I was like, wow, bro, you, you got some good, uh, you getting some good information and some good training from uh, said individual. And he was like, yeah, man. I was like, man, that's awesome. I said, you need to cherish that. So, and that's Isaac right here with the black sheep bib on. And so I have right here, uh, Gamma to my right. And uh, we're just making way. So you see now I'm kind of on the inside. So you see there's more talking going on between Isaac and another rider. And, uh, and I was just telling them, I actually told them at that mind, just race, just, just race, just race your bike, ride your bike. Cause all that talking could cause an accident. And, uh, again, keep your head in the game. So you see there, number eight, four, zero, that's Larry Tonzo with, uh, no, 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 that's not Larry. That's actually Frank. That's Frank with, uh, he just joined up with PRT. Uh, congratulations, Frank, on your addition to, uh, Paddock racing team. And so right now we're coming up and you see here hitting over 350 Watts going 25 miles an hour my heart rate's good i'm at a 161 or excuse me 170 169 170 171 uh so the heart rate is really good i'm around a few different serious cyclist guys and uh just kind of now you see me not so much inside but more actually inboard of the peloton so um and again looking at the rear camera which i typically forget about uh, my apologies you know there's a lot of people behind me but you see i'm still kind of hovering very close to the front of the peloton you see there ron tello in the rear camera you see prince patel in the rear camera and then you see one of the dna uh dna cycling riders there so just trying to stay close to the front of the peloton my heart rate's at 180 um so it's up a little bit and the pace is at 25 miles an hour as we come through turn number one um and a lot of times my heart rate's going to jump up because of that little that little three percent roller that we that i have to experience every single course or every single lap, excuse me. And so right now, just sitting in, tucking in, and now you see I'm kind of outside. So somehow I made my way to the outside. I think I was gonna try to jump on that on the green kit, but uh, it didn't work. But then I saw Prince Patel here, and so I was like, okay, I know that's a good wheel to follow. Um, but they were kind of going a little gutter, and I wasn't sure I wanted to ride gutter, especially on the outside. So I try now to shift, trying to shift myself back to the inside. So you see me here getting off of being on the left side of the peloton, trying to shift now back to the right. So I kind of get boxed in right here, I'm back on Steven's wheel. Um, and again, now we're my, I'm back inside. And uh, this is where I want to be. I got, uh, I believe this is Larry to my left. Can't see, but I know I'm on Steve's wheel. And I think this is Larry Tonzo. Nope, that's Frank again. So that's Frank. I keep getting Frank and Larry mixed up, but I believe Larry Tonzo was also in this race um, of Paddock Grayson team. They had a few different riders. I believe they had Larry, Frank and they also had Ron in this race. And so right now again just sitting on Steve's wheel. I know he's a very strong rider as well and he was like, "Man, I'm not going to be as punchy this race as I was the last race." So I said, "Okay, uh, I can handle that, you know." Um and so when I any time I got around him, I was like, "You know, I'll just sit on this wheel because you know, it's a it's a good strong rider here." And I said that about everybody cuz I don't think anybody racing is not strong. I think that's what makes uh the race scene fun because we all are strong and we all are, are pushing to better ourselves and we're all challenging ourselves to go faster, to go longer, to go harder and to uh, win, ultimately to win or at least get on that podium, I say. So now I'm kind of back. I'm still inboard, but closer to the inside than I am the outside. And um, yeah, so right now we are at 23 minutes, about to be 24 minutes into this. So we are now past the halfway point. And just I ask that you would, you know, pause the video if you have to go get you some tea, go get you some water. Go get you some uh, cream soda and come on back and uh, draft this thing on out with me. So you see here, um, we got two yellows right here in front of me, but the yellow jersey wearer is the guy with the blue kit, not the, the, the yellow and black one. So the guy right in front of me, um, just up about one o'clock, he is the yellow jersey wearer and he rides with Sirius Cycling. Again, not sure what his name is, can't see his bib. Um, not sure if it's Jordan or if it's Indy, not sure right now. 
um because again i'm on his left side and the number is on his right side so right now making our way up and there's gamma over there to the right <clears throat> excuse me and uh actually maybe so i can see a bib number i think it says 864 yeah so that's jordan so jordan is the um so that actually helped because he got first in this race so that helped me look down at the paper because i see first i see first through sixth on my piece of paper here and then you know everything goes tears down all the way to the end so uh this is jordan right here um of serious cycling who is the yellow jersey so of course as you now know he got first in this race thus keeping the yellow jersey and uh felt good to be actually sitting on the yellow jerseys uh will again and the reason why i say this is because in one of the other videos that i did not i believe it was the cbr dominguez hills race i found myself sitting on um gamma's uh wheel and he was the yellow jersey wearer for the cat four races now he's not anymore there's somebody from big one i actually i think the guy right here eight four five just across the way at about a, a 10 o'clock over there uh, he is the yellow jersey wearer for the cat four but this is three four so there's going to be a different person, which I believe this gentleman, Jordan, he is a Cat 3 rider. So he is the jersey wearer for Cat 3. And because they're the more senior cat of this race, there's only one, one you know, yellow jersey wearer per race. So um, the Category 4 has to relinquish that to the Category 3 since he's more senior, um, or at least a higher cat. I don't want to say more senior. But, um, but yeah, so I found myself at times being on the yellow jersey's wheel and uh, that it felt good to know okay i'm in a good place i'm in a decent place and then when i notice that i'm there you know when i get my mind out of, of of racing and holding position and really observing oh i'm sitting on the yellow jersey where's wheel if i can hold that you know try to stay with that guy because apparently he knows what he's doing he knows where to sit when to sit there when to stay there he knows when to move what moves to go with he knows how to respond because again he has a yellow jersey now yeah sometimes it comes by chance but hey i would rather be on the wheel of somebody that took a chance and, and did good with it than being on a, a person's wheel who never took a chance so um it felt good to be on his wheel and i think later in the video i find myself on his wheel again and again because we're all moving around because people get tired and people try to stay covered and people take wrong lines or whatever may happen so we all there's a continual shuffle in the peloton and so you see right now i'm around two and two dna cbs cycling guys i keep calling them dna but this dna cbs uh i'm on two of those guys wheels right here in front of me and so we're just pushing on so at 175 beats per minute 30 miles an hour um my my, my revolutions per minute my cadence is up it's at one over 100 which is decent because now you see it drop down immediately after i say that so i think it got scared because i was talking about it and it went away so right now coasting so you see how the peloton again is swollen you see right there that there some guys are climbing now and they kind of swole right before uh turn number three and here again is ryan tello so it kind of swole just a little bit i think the pace uh the tempo slowed down you're starting to see now guys coming out the saddle and as i mentioned in the last video that the commentary that i did is that once you start seeing guys come out of the saddle that means that they're getting tired um because we've done multiple laps we've probably done over 10 laps now on the course and now you see I'm outside, but we've done over 10 laps on the course. And so people's legs get tired. And so to put out some more wattage to help get some more power um, to help them get up that climb, they come out the saddle. Uh, and so you start to pick up on different things like that, like who's tired, who's not, um, because we've been doing this a few times and you realize, OK, well, the last the last lap, you were able to get up this thing without, you know, by staying seated. This time you're out the saddle. Is it one, you know, because the pace is too fast or two, because you're getting tired? And usually it's probably, it probably because you're getting tired, but it all depends on when it is. Like if it's the last lap, then it's probably because the tempo is picking up and you want to keep up, you know. Um, but in midst, in the middle of the race, um, it's probably because you're starting to get just a little fatigued and you need to put out just a little bit more watch to keep up with the group so that you can stay covered and then also recover. So right now, again, back on the inside just a little bit. Um, and I got Prince Patel to my right. And uh, yeah, we're, 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 I see a couple serious cycling guys around me. I see them all over here. I think they, they came in this race deep. So I knew Prince Patel was a good will to follow, um, but I see he's just kind of easy riding right now. <clears throat> so I wasn't going to fully go out in the wind just yet to see what he was going to do. But right now you see I have one. If you look to the right of the screen, there's one, two. I think the guy to my right may be another serious cycling. Yeah, so we got three serious cycling people right here, and then we got the DNA CBS. We got Ron Tello right there, the Paddock Racing Team guy, 
And so I'm like, okay, I'm around some decent people right here because uh, these guys are these guys are are strong, you know. But the main thing that stuck out to me was these three D these three serious cycling guys being to my right and having Prince right there. So that was a good indicator that I'm in good position. And then if you look up the road just a little bit, you will also see the yellow jersey were up there. So what that told me, looking at race tactics, is that the team is trying to get in position so that when they move up, the yellow jersey wearer can see, or Jordan, can see them. And then, so you see now, you see one of the serious cyclists guy, he's on the inside. There's two. So now you see the yellow jersey wearer. You see a serious cycling guy sitting on his wheel. You see another serious cycling guy moving up. Actually, nope, there's a yellow jersey wearer right there. Man, these yellow jerseys throw me off sometimes. But if you look to the right, you see all those serious cycling guys. So you got Prince. You got Jordan. We got James right there with uh, Pasadena, Jail, Velo Pasadena right there. But if you look over to the right side, which is the inside of the Peloton, you have all of serious cycling. So that, that that was an indicator for me. So right now I'm sitting on Ron Tello's wheel. And you got also got, Con, I believe, nope, that's not Conrad. So many people, y'all. Y'all don't understand. There's 88 people in this race. And there's Irvin right there with the UFC kit just on the other side. There's Irvin, 863, that's Irvin um, of Breakaway. But if you look to the right, that's my focus. The right is the inside, and you have several serious cycling guys. So right now, I know that Ron Tello is strong, but I know that Ron Tello is not stronger than a team that's lined up. So if you look to the right now, you got four serious cycling guys right there, and you got Irv, or you got uh, Isaac going underneath them, but you got four serious cycling guys all lined up, and then you have them with their yellow jersey wear. So right now, I'm just sitting just in the middle of the peloton as we go through turn number four, but I knew that eventually I need to get on that train. So I move up just trying to hold place on Ron's wheel, seeing what's gonna happen. Got Gamma right here to my right. Um, and just, and I see there's a little gap here. So, you know, I try to maintain my space. I see again, that guy right that I'm directly behind. That's another serious cycling guy. And so just trying to maintain my place, I know I got Ron right here. So I'm like, okay, I know that Ron, um, from doing different training things that we did together last year, and even like the donut rod or just local uh, training rods such as flow holes, I know that Ron is a very strong rider. So I say, okay, I'm around Ron, I'm doing okay. So he kind of fell back a little bit, and now he's just to my left. But at the same time, I realized that serious cycling is here, and they are trying to get in position to lead Jordan out. And uh, I think they did it phenomenally because I'm, I keep looking over here at the at the race results that I have and uh, Sirius Cycling did really, really well in this race. They had multiple people in top in top 10. You know, so as you saw, I've already called out four, or see, there's been four of them that I've identified. And if you got four guys in a race and all of, and, and a good bit of them got top 10, they did fantastically well in this category three, four race. So a hey, kudos, Strava kudos to uh, Sirius Cycling for their execution during this uh, this race. But right now, again, just sitting in on the uh, this guy with the green kit. Oh, there's a fall there. And I believe that was Frank who went down with Padjar Grayson team. I'm not sure what happened. Don't know if he got tangled up with an overlap or if he caught a cramp or whatever but frank went down and i actually saw him after the race i thought it was larry at first again as you guys already know i keep getting those two guys mixed up but uh, i originally thought it was larry and then ron came up here next to me um i believe he's on my left right now he was asking me if it was larry and i was like yeah that was larry but it come to find out it was frank so frank hope you healed up well buddy i hope you may, you know whoever made it this far i send my condolences to frank that he will heal up Hope your bike is well and hope to see you soon back again uh, on the streets here in Chula Vista as well as on the next uh, race, which is whether it's a CBR race or whether it's even uh, Barrel Logan, which is coming up here this month. So right now sitting on DNA CBS's wheel. But yeah, Ron had asked me, uh, was it was it was it who was it? I said, I think it was LT, but come to find out as I believe we come around this next lap here that it was actually Frank. Um, of Paddy Grayson team. So you see that guy right there just about uh, one o'clock. He's got a yellow jersey on as well, but he has black bibs on. And that's what I was talking about earlier. I thought he was 
Jordan, but that's not Jordan. That's somebody else on a different team. But yet Jordan's wearing the yellow jersey, but he has on bl um, blue bibs. So right now, again, just, just rolling through. Um, you know, got guys on the rear camera. Not much going on behind me. Um, but yeah, we just passed Frank. They had actually got, he was able to get up and get off the road. Um, he was sitting over there in the shade um, waiting for, uh, I believe, the race organizer, uh, Jeff Prince, to get over there with the truck to get him up to the medical tent. <clears throat> so right now you see that the pace is up a little bit. The speed is up 28 miles an hour. My heart rate is elevated. I'm at 186 beats per minute. Cadence is still good. Um, it was at 98 when I said that. Now it's now it's back to 98, but it's fluctuating up and down. Um, and of course, going through a turn, um, depending on how fast I'm going, what how, how what my angle may be, I may stop pedaling so I do not clip a pedal because another buddy of mine actually went down um, in CBR Dominguez Hills by clipping his pedal on the ground. And he actually had to have surgery um, on his clavicle. So you have to be really, really careful going into these turns um, outside foot down, inside foot up. Um, and here, okay, here we got serious cycling. So look, there's three serious cycling guys right there. So there's Prince. So what do I do? They're all inside again. And I jump on that wheel. I jump on that train. I'm like, okay, here it is again. It's showing its face again. I'm going to jump on this. There's, a, there's a Isaac and there's a race leader. I mean, we got serious cycling here doing their thing. You got Ronnie Chalk over there, 867. Um, he's looking, he's seeing people. And the good thing that I've learned about these guys too, they see each other weekly from you know local group rides and they all live kind of in the same area. So you see the truck over there to the right, that's over there, they're over there tending to Frank from the crash just uh, two laps ago. Um, but yeah, these guys get to ride together so they get to see each other and uh, you know, they, just, they really get to know who each other is. So you see here Jordan telling Prince to come on up. Why do you think this? So now he's gonna help Prince get up there on that wheel. He's pushing him up to get in line so that these guys can get their train ready. So what do I do? I immediately jump on that train. Like I saw the race leader, I saw Jordan tell Prince, get up here. He helped him get on up there. So I said, okay, we got DNA C uh, CBS coming up underneath. But I said, you know what? I'm gonna just ride this train the best I can. And I said, all right, I'm gonna ride this thing. There's Larry Tonzo up there. You can barely see him, but that's now finally who I keep calling out. That's Larry, just about one o'clock. Uh, with the black kid on he also has black force sock force try socks on so right now i'm really trying to stay committed to this train so we see here we got four d or four uh serious cycling guys in front of me to include prince patel as well as jordan and uh you see they pick up the pace we're going 28 miles an hour and I'm, I'm following them like they're going underneath i'm going underneath i'm trying to stay fully committed to this wheel and you see now there's not many guys in front there's a guy broken away I, let, I believe that was uh, who just came underneath me was Peter. Peter Verth, who's actually is the green jersey wearer for the Cat 4 race. So I said, I let him come underneath me. I said, this is a bigger body. I can sit on this. So I let Peter come underneath and I jump back on his wheel. You see my heart rate is at 186, 187. We're going 25 miles an hour up the hill. My cadence is up to 88, 89. And I'm pushing out over 400 watts. And so now you see Peter kind of easy spinning and we get kind of sucked back up by the group. But as soon as Peter goes to the outside, I jump right back on Jordan's wheel. So now we had, you saw a police car, and you see there's another guy down on the right-hand side. That was Dorian. Come to find out, Dorian didn't crash, but he cramped up. So he pulled out, and I think he just fell over because he wasn't able to clip, uh, to unclip from his bike. So he kind of fell over, but yet they responded to him. So right now, again, you see here three serious cycling guys in front of me. You still got the yellow jersey wearer. Uh, which is Jordan, and I'm like, I'm going to try to stay committed to this. Um, you got Ron Teller to the left of me. You got some some pretty strong guys that are around me right now, and I'm like, okay, all right, let's see what we got. And again, my heart rate is at 182, and I'm just trying to stay. You got Isaac up there. I mean, all the hitters are, like, up here. So now you see I got kind of got pinched out right there. So we got this stork guy right here with the blue kit with the uh, green helmet. And then you've got the California Bicycling Ambassador kit right here in front of me now, who's also wearing some of those nice aero socks. Um, I kind of got pinched out. So you see, I'm, I'm probably about two bike lengths back. Ron Tillo came and filled a gap. Now I'm getting boxed in. And I, I kind of like got out of place right here. So it's like, oh man, that wasn't good. So I see an opportunity right here. 
to go outside to probably try to get back up on that wheel. But at the same time, seeing Ron Tello here, I'm like, okay, that's a good wheel to follow too. So I just try to get on the closest wheel that I can get on to maintain position. You see Ronnie Chalk up there, he's out of the saddle climbing. You see Ron out of the saddle climbing because again, the pace is up. We're going 26 miles an hour. And uh, of course, we all are trying to, we're all bucking for position. We're all trying to get in position. Again, the yellow jersey is still in my sights. I got Ron Tello in my sights. I'm like, okay, I'm good. We got Prince right here. We're, I'm still good. Everything is good. So we come through the turn, but the cars being on that inside right there really swings us out really wide, which kind of throws off our, our cornering line. Um, but I got SC Velo in front of me right now. We got guys going up on the, on the inside. You see there, there's guys moving up on the inside. This is probably the last lap. I'm not, let's check it. So we're at 40 minutes. Yeah, so this is the last lap right here. We're at 40 minutes in. We got two more minutes to go, ladies and gentlemen. So right now, you see how everybody is really jockeying for position. They're trying to move up. They're, they're trying to hold their ground where they are. And because of that, just being honest, I've, I lost some ground. I lost a lot of wheels, and I just have to finish a lot stronger. And because of that, I've been really working tempo rides, you know, two-and-a-half-hour tempo rides, three-hour tempo rides. There's James. You know, now I'm outside swinging through because there's a lot of people on the inside. And so just really trying to finish stronger. And that's the biggest thing is that, you know, from playing football, I kind of have that, you know, sprint here, back off, recover, sprint, back off, recover. I have that type of endurance. But to maintain it for a long period of time, I don't have that type of endurance, more like a like a like a, a long distance sprinter. I don't have that. I'm more of a like a 50 yard dash or a 100 yard dash guy. So we're coming up on the final climb. And uh, we got roughly about 30 seconds left. So coming up on the climb, you see people out of the south. We just passed Prince. We got Isaac still there. We got guys coming underneath. So I take the I take the underneath line um, coming underneath by uh, um, South Bay Willsman, and we're coming up to the final turn. And let's see how many watch your boy C Dub hits. We're all sprinting now. I hit 900 watts, and then what happened was my front tire skipped off the ground so i had to reset then i tried to hit it again i hit 900 watts again following that got 21st of 88 thanks guys for watching please comment like subscribe on to the next one it's your boy sita aka crit wit peace